Good morning, everyone. Yep, it's me again. <laughs> Not gonna go away <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I got a Bible to read. So the thought came to me, is there a world flag? Then I went and checked it out. That was sage or donkey. <laughs> There is. <laughs> in 1988, some guy came up, can't remember his name now, just read it, <laughs> Gary something, and uh, he uh, proposed a, to, to make a world flag with 159 united something countries, nations, something like that. Uh, I've seen that flag before. I was looked at him. Oh, I've seen this before. It's a nice flag in a way, but it's missing some components I would like to see in it. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> if God's not in it, <laughs> planet Earth is planet Earth, but planet Earth isn't just it. Anyway, world flag. Well, if you want a world flag, then you need to say, okay, let's have a universal flag, right? Okay, all right. Anyway, it exists. It is out there. Um, yeah, how would one really truly create a flag where everything would be represented? Everyone and everything eh, in it. Oh, interesting. Anywho, must give it some thought. Yeah, anywho, let's get started. <laughs> I did have a little uh, conversation about what I talked about yesterday with my friend about the uh, uh, what the topic should be, and it's it's an international academic conference, okay? Yeah, 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 see, that's when you don't read all of it properly. And uh, she is very much involved with many other people in coming up with a God-centered curriculum. Yes, uh, I'm sure it's very interesting, this, that. I've not really read any of that. Uh, my children are all out of school. But... They've already had some really good results in, in some countries with it, where uh, schools and whole uh, uh, countries, not the whole nation, but countries, have, uh, have a, a da a d adopted that uh, curriculum. Uh, I need to find out exactly what the name of it is. <coughs> and... Uh, this is one thing about my friend. There's nothing that gets her out of it. There's no... She has this just focused, calm center. Right? I think sometimes she's not aware of that, but I feel it. And, uh, and she always... She has this way to give. When you're giving something, she has this way to give back. And it's just really amazing embracing and loving way right yes okay anywho i'm much more fierce i'm 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 way more fierce i really uh yeah <laughs> i am not as eloquent as she is when it comes to expressing oneself yes uh, anywho it's a nice pleasant little conversation we had about it all and she says, I'll, I'll see what I can do, you know, <laughs> which already had said the same thing. She tells me, I'll pray about it. <laughs> you got to love friends like that. Anyway, uh, then I saw another one where uh, in uh, supposedly I didn't go and check it out because it's again, one of those things where I'm going, oh my gosh, surely I didn't get the whole story. 
I know where this particular news station or this outlet, you know, where they stand. And it's like, ugh, just look at the whole picture. Rather than just run with your own agenda. And in Minneapolis, I don't know why you need to have a law or permission or whatever for any of that. I'm not getting it. Okay. If you're a, pro if you're a human being with a proper heart to mind, you're not going to be threatened by people eh, praying to God in public, you know, wherever it is. Eh? And they have their schedule to do so. Eh? So, well, who could that be? So in Minneapolis, the uh, Muslim community now can pray and uh, do their prayers wherever they are, this and that. Eh? Well, that's great. Why would I be against that? First of all, why did they even need permission? People realize not all, not all Muslims are terrorists, right? Not all Muslims are out to get you, right? Okay. And, you know, again, uh, I started reading the Quran, and I, I kind of, it was like, man, that sounds so similar to the Bible. I'm sure certain things are in it that maybe not, but, yeah, I wonder about that. There's a lot of killing in the Bible going on too, okay? Oh, over what? Same thing that's in their Bible. All right, all right. Just saying. And uh, I've gone, okay. But right away, it was like, oh, you know, one couldn't in Minneapolis, you couldn't call for prayer when it comes to God, right? But here now, and I'm going, oh my God, oh, jeez, come on. Now, uh, what do they say? Make an elephant out of a mouse or something, right? Anywho, so <laughs> they're both gray. <laughs> so silly to me yeah, that people take offense to that. And here's the thing. You know, one of the best things you see I've seen, I've seen that at the, at, the, at the airport. I remember specifically, I went to pick up someone at the airport. <coughs> and as I uh, parked my car and got out, I saw a, uh, I'm assuming a Muslim, getting his little carpet out right next to his car right? and kind of in between two cars. He wasn't right out there, you know, in the, where then you couldn't drive by or whatever, nicely out of the way. And he started kneeling down on the carpet and doing the bowing, you know, I'm zooming towards Mecca and this. And I was just, oh, wow, what a... I had no feelings of... As I says, you know, I just looked at them going, oh, how devoted, how devoted. Yes. Okay, I don't know what's in the heart of mind of that person. Why are you doing it? All right, Yes. Of course, I didn't want to go and interrupt and say, hi, yeah, just wondering. <laughs> and uh, I walked uh, to pick up the person. I thought, man, I'm being uh, right there. I'm being uh, accompanied by prayer. Yes, that's how you look at it. And then even if, maybe in the heart to mind of that person was something else going on, you're balancing it out because you're not adding to, right? Yeah, if that was the case. If his heart to mind was in the right place, right? Yes, about the prayer. Then guess what? My attitude enhanced the energy and the whole surrounding. Don't you think? Aha, uh -huh, yeah, yes. That'd be interesting, huh? If in Minneapolis... Huh? Uh, Muslims now, well, little groups are by themselves, start doing that. What if, as a Christian, you stand with us, do you mind if I join you, you know, in my prayer to God? Right, there's two or more gathered. Guess what? Yes, aha. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, see? Okay, just had to mention that. Ugh, I come across these posts and just ideas of people and how to put things out there and I'm going, hey, put a cork in it. <laughs> Both fans or something. <laughs> well, anywho, well, see, my friend wouldn't say, my friend Nancy would never say anything like this. 
Okay. To balance each other well, too. <laughs> on the same page when it comes to loving God. All right, this is for our celestial condition. And uh, goes till May, I believe. Well, we're going to continue on. This is going to be part of the whole condition here we're doing. And then who knows, after that, it's going to keep right on going. Just depends how long I'm going to live here. Maybe I'll uh, let my children inherit this prayer. This powerful prayer of healing and restoration. Oh, well, there you go. Look at all them good ideas I come up with. Okay, I was a blessed child. Peace in mankind. Care and love for every dependent child. Peace. What with echoes here now? Every child. Feels secure, which reflects cause and effect in the child's life. Peace. Nice. Every child eats. Peace. Oh, it's echoing all through the hall in here. Every child is warmed in cold times. Peace. Understanding a child's growth in troubling times. Then to guide the child to attain harmony with peace. I am peace as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter of God. Peace to become the best I can be for every child. Repentance, knowing every child is deserving of peace. Prayer, knowing every child comes first. See, that's why I have a loud voice. It's needed sometimes. <laughs> Restored, conditions are fulfilled when every child is loved and cared for. Death separates us from our earthly path to attain peace. Our taught descendants are the future, the change of lineage, God's lineage in action, the true cause and effect in a child's harmonious and happy life. Right, Bo? You're looking at me out there. I am an adult, ashamed to ask for anything from my heavenly parents for myself. If a child on earth needs my prayers and conditions greater than I. Peace will happen when peace can be found in every child. I will be less than any child that suffers due to mankind's unkindness. Spirit world will hold us all accountable. Regardless, remember that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hey, you. Oh, the boys are back already. Oh, and their food isn't ready. Well, they'll have to wait, don't they? Oh my gosh, we're back in census again. Well, there are so many people to plagues and misbehavior and I don't know what. No wonder they have to take a census again. <laughs> I know, right? How do you sure laugh a lot? And I said, well, life, regardless of what is happening, this and that, or what has happened, and even when you think about it, if you get if you get too deep into something, right, that you already can't change anymore. All you can do is talk about it, and hopefully people learn from it, right? Then uh, you sink into something that just gets darker and darker. Well I don't like that. I'm not like that. Right? Yes? Yeah. And uh, and so uh, I just <laughs> Approach everything from the lighter side, right? Yes? Oh, don't get me wrong. I've got my my uh, times where, uh, uh, as easily as I laugh, I can just as easily cry, too. Oh, well, all right. I probably already woke Sissy up. 
with the prayer I just did, my prayer poem. Now the dog's made sure she is up. <laughs> Jake, he just got ugh, all that splattering going on. They come home wet every time. Drop my stick too, looks like. All right, let's get to numbers 26. We are in the super chapter of 5, 6, 7, 8. Further legislation. <laughs> More rules. <laughs> oh, must have not made things clear before. Let's <laughs> clarify things. The census. Oh, this is feeding them. After this plague, Yahweh spoke to Moses and to the priest Eleazar, son of Aaron, and said, Take a census of the whole community of Israelites by families, all those of 20 years and over, fit to bear arms in Israel. Fit to bear arms in Israel. Why not just who can, who can carry a tool? Huh? No, fit to bear arms. <laughs> Well, anyway, it's in here, so now who knows who put that in. Not from God. Don't believe that. So Moses and the priest Eleazar took a census of them on the plains of Moab, near the Jordan by Jericho. They counted, as Yahweh had ordered Moses and the Israelites after leaving Egypt, men of 20 years and over. Reuben, the firstborn, here we go again. Holy cannoli, look, we get to go, we get to read the whole thing again. <coughs> oh, I should have my notepad out here and see if there's any difference. Well, let's see. I've got kind of the numbers in my head still. <laughs> well, how would I? Well, you'd be surprised. Sometimes my, my mind still functions quite well. <laughs> okay, let's see. Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, the sons of Reuben, for Hanak, the Hanakite clan, for Palu, the Paluite clan, for Hezron, the Hezronite clan, for Carmi, the Carmite clan. These were the Reubenite clans. They numbered 43,730 men. 43,000. Weren't they 34,000 or something before? Oh. The sons of Palu, Eliab, the sons of Eliab. Wait a second. Nemuel, Dathon, and Abiram, these two, Dathon and Abiram, men of repute in the community, were the ones who revolted against Moses and Aaron. They belonged to Korah's group when it revolted against Yahweh. Oh, they're still there? Wait. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them with Korah when that group perished, when fire consumed the 250 men. They were a sign. Korah's sons, however, did not perish. Oh, there is a discrepancy here, right there. Because remember, they said in front of the tent with the wife and the children, and they were all condemned. They said, okay, see, right there, told you. No, I'm right when I'm right. <laughs> Even when I'm not right, I'm somewhat right. Okay, all right, all right. Danielle. I notice things like that. The sons of Simeon by clans for Nemuel, the Nemuelite clan for Yamin, the Yaminite clan for Yachin, the Yachinite clan for Serah, the Serahite clan for Shal, the Shalite clan. These were the Simeonite clans. They numbered 22,200 men. Oh, well, that really got depleted. There was no 22,000. There was no, oh, oh. The sons of Gad by clans for Sephon, the Sephonite clan for Haggai, the Haggai clan. And we got different clans here going too. For Shuni, the Shunite clan. For Uzni, the Uznite clan. For Eri, the Erite clan. For Erod, the Eridite clan. Huh. For Areli, the Aralite clan, these were the clans of the sons of Gad. They numbered 40,500 men. Huh? 
think that has up, wasn't that like 54,000 or something? Hmm? Not sure. Well, we'll find out in the end. The sons of Judah, Er and Onan. Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Huh? We haven't got to Canaan yet, though. Oh, wait a minute. Some of them were going that way, weren't they? Okay, all right. Wow, they must have stayed in communication with each other. The other sons of Judah became clans. Hmm. For Shelah, the Shelahite clan. For Perez, the Perezite clan. For Serah, the Serahite clan. The sons of Perez were for Hezron, the Hezronite clan. For Hamul, the Hamulite clan. These were the clans of Judah. They numbered 76,500 76, men. Whoa. Oh, interesting. I think that's the highest. Pretty sure that's the highest, except for the the uh, eighty-four thousand for the uh, uh, Levites. So they increased. It sounds like everybody else has decreased, but they have increased. Ooh, the sons of Judah, Aaron, Onan, Aaron, Onan died in the land of Canaan. Oh, are they? How did they get the? Okay, uh, okay. Well, it's a little confusing here. Where, whoever, where they were, and how they did that. The sons of Ishakar by clans for Tola, the Tolite clan, for Puva, the Puvahite clan. I wonder if I would belong to the Wutanite clan. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> for Yashub, the Yashubite clan, for Shimron, the Shimronite clan. These were the clans of Ishakar. They numbered 64,300 men. Ooh, that sounds more too. The sons of Sebulun by clans. Now, what are the sons of Ishakar? Okay. The sons of Sebulun by clans for Seret, the Seredite clan, for Elon, the Elonite clan, for Yahil, the Yahilite clan. These were the clans of Sebulun. Ooh. They numbered 60,500 men. Mmm, that looks like that's more too. The numbers are higher than some. The first ones were lower. The sons of Joseph by clans, Manasseh and Ephraim. The sons of Manasseh for Machir, the Machirite clan. Machir fathered Gilead for Gilead, the Gileadite clan. Up oh, there are the sons of getting old and having their own families. These were the sons of Gilead. For Eser, the easier right clan, whoop, and there is more. Right on along. Start, looks like three generations now, four generations. For Helek, the Helekite clan, Azrael, the Azraelite clan, Shechem, the Shechemite clan, Shemida, the Shemidiaite clan. Oh my gosh, these names are so, they're pretty, they're all pretty. Just probably saying half of it wrong, I apologize. Hefer, the Heferite clan, Zelophehad, son of Hefer. <laughs> I'm not sure who just set that back to me from Spurs. It doesn't seem to stop you. <laughs> no. Son of Hefer had no sons, only daughters. Oh. The names of Selophehad's daughters were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tursa. Interesting names. Sound like boys' names. I bet. I wonder how you fear, fared as a man there when you didn't have any sons and only daughters, right? Why don't you take a concubine? Looks like an evil one, right? Maybe this guy said, no, don't. I'm good with my girls, <laughs> my daughters. I'm good with my wife. Don't know. Oh, interesting. Ooh, maybe this uh, Salafihad 
Oop, be worth reading up on. Interesting. Oh, my respect to him. If that was the case, don't know for sure. Hmm, sure sounds like it. Okay, these were the clans of Manasseh. They numbered 52,700 men. Oh, did they include the daughters in the counting of... Because... I don't know. I have no idea. They mentioned. I mentioned them if they... That's an interesting one. What happened there? Well, I mentioned them. They wouldn't be included in the census of men 20 and over. Huh. Okay. Hmm. These were the sons of Ephraim by clans. For Shutalah, the Shutalahite clan. For Becher, the Becherite clan. For Tahan, the Tahanite clan. These were the sons of Shutalah. For Iran, the Aaronite clan. These were the clans of Ephraim. They numbered 32,500 men. Oh. I know we had a 32,001, but was that clans of Ephraim at that time? That's a pretty low one right there. These were the sons of, wait a minute. Well, anyway. These were the sons of Joseph by clans. The sons of Benjamin by clans. For Bela, the Belite clan. For Ashbel, the Ashbelite clan. For Ahiram, the Ahiramite clan. For Shepu, oh my gosh. Shepu. Pum, Shepupam, Shepupam, the Shepupamite clan, for Hupam, Hufam or Hupam, P-H, how's that spelled in, in, uh, in Jewish names, hmm, Jewish, uh, Hebrew name, Hupam, 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 or Hup, Hupam, Hupam, the Hapamite clan. Bella's sons were Ard and Naaman. 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 For Ard, the Ardite clan. For Naaman, the Namamite clan. These were the sons of Benjamin by clans. They numbered 45,600 men. Hmm. These were the sons of Dan by clans for Shuham, the Shuhamite clan. Oh, wow. Listen to this. These were the sons of Dan by clans. That Dan for Shuham, the Shuhamite clan. That's it. These were the sons of, of Dan by clans. All the Shuhamite clans numbered 64,400 men. Now I remember that the the, the 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 tribe of Dan, they already, they had uh, they had a high number, and I think it was higher than sixty four. So they lost some people. The sons of Asher by clans. I'm not sure. I don't take my word for that one. I didn't study that up because I didn't even realize. I'm gonna look that up later. Then I can talk about it tomorrow. Yes, that'd be very interesting, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. You know what? Interestingly enough, right? for people, their own generations, uh, for most people, for a lot of people, right? especially also when you don't know where you came from, this and that. So who would it? People are very interested in their lineage and all that, right? Yes? Well, if that is so for ourselves, then we should give the respect out to everyone else as well, shouldn't we? That would be a normal thing to do. So even though, okay, to have me go through this again, it's still interesting in a way, right? Yes? Oh, we, because we know what happened before. This, that, here's the census again. Da, da, da. Okay, well, let's just go with the interest, right? And the respect towards that as well. So, I think I've sounded somewhat eloquent there. <laughs> All right. Don't try. Ah. Uh, all right, the sons of Asher by clans for Imna, the Imnahai clan for Ishvi. Oh, look at there, Ishvi, Ishvi, not Ishi, but Ishvi. <laughs> the Ishviite clan. 
for Berea, the Bereahite clan, for the sons of Berea, for, for Heber, the Heberite clan, for Malkiel, the Malkielite clan. Man, I'm proud of myself being able to read these names. My way, maybe, but still, I'm reading it. The daughter of Asher was called Sarah. These were the clans of Asher. They numbered 53,400 men. The sons of Naphtali, by clans, for Jezel, the Jezelite clan, for Guni, the Gunite clan, for Jezer, the Jezerite clan, for Shelem, the Shelemite clan. These were the clans of Naphtali, as divided into clans. The sons of Naphtali numbered 45,400 men. Of the Israelites thus numbered, were there were 601,730 men. And we had 603,050 or something. Oh, well, in all the years, per se, they did not diminish a whole lot, did they? Six hundred and one thousand seven hundred and thirty men. Yahweh then spoke to Moses and said, The country must be shared out among these as a heritage. Proportionately to the number of those inscribed. To the large in number, you will give a large area of land. To the small in number, a small area. To each, the heritage will be in proportion to the number registered. The sharing out of the country must, however, be done by lot. Each will receive a heritage proportionate to the number of names in their patriarchal tribes. The heritage of each tribe will be shared out by lot, depending on its larger or smaller numbers. Huh, interesting. So... So even though, so oh, that's a fair way, right, to share out the country, first of all. Okay, did we skip some stuff here? <laughs> what country are we talking about, right? What happened here? We were just in the, uh, okay, man, what's wrong with them people? The way they just behaved. Now we're, okay, done with that. So did we skip some stuff here? Where are they exactly? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't say. Where are they handing out property? Oh, so they came to a still stand and that's it. They are where they wanted to go. And are they in Canaan? Are they? Or where are they at exactly? Who did they take over? <laughs> Just wondering. Right? And then yeah, giving out the lots according to yep, the number of people. Does that, that kind of makes sense, right? Yes, you have a larger group of people, then surely a little larger piece eh, of land would be appropriate. But they're doing it by lot, right? Okay, all right, so you, so you got so many. So this is your bucket where you get to choose from the smaller lots. This is your bucket to choose from, from right? All right. For larger lots, according to how many people there are in each tribe, clan. And uh, so it's again by Lakta, right? Yes, I'm sure there are some places there that are better than others, you know, depending. At, or are they all equal? Well, if they're all equal, you wouldn't have to, what, draw lots. <laughs> oh, okay then. All right. Ah, so here we go. Huh? Lady Luck. It's either on your side or not. Okay. Odd one. Huh? Uh, again, I guess it would take too long to, uh, oh, forgot to have them all in front of, or just, uh, Moses going to say, okay, tell me where to put everybody according to their best abilities. Huh? Some people huh? farm. Huh? You think everybody farms on flat land? Ah. You think everybody everybody would do well in the mountains farming? Or does it take a special type of people to do so? Hmm? And to have the love for the mountains. Do you think that people grew up in the mountains and have that love for the mountains? It's ingrained in you, just like the sea is ingrained in some people, okay? 
You think they do well in just flat land? They're probably going to say, well, this is easy work. Sure, yeah, but would they be happy? Yeah. But farmers who grew up in, on the plains and the prairies, they snap, know how to work the ground there, right? Yes, know about that. Huh? Have to pay a lot of attention to what? Rainy rain. Huh? Yes, got to know what to plant at certain times. Okay, that's for every farmer, regardless of where they are. But again, so God didn't take into consideration, oh, wait a minute, what kind of clans do I have? Yeah, and what, what does each clan, what do they excel at this net? Didn't take that under consideration, just draw lots? Hmm. I find that an odd one. Okay, yes. So, but okay. I don't think, I think this is just people set this up. Right? God wouldn't set this up like that. I don't believe that. How well do you know God? I know him pretty good. Okay. Senses of the Levites. I'm just saying, right? I may have my own, uh, my own, uh-huh. I have my own heart to mind, huh? but there is a, and I'm out my own person. I've got my own physical body. I've got my own spirit, yes? My soul, though, yeah, comes from where? Is attached to whom? Yes, see? Yes course that resonates and if i try uh, to live a proper life uh, uh, yes without guilt without shame without hurting other people this not won't go on da, 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 da. Uh, or if something has come up doesn't i try to restore that repent for it be humble about it apologize sincerely for it this not, uh, and uh, what does it say here in some if uh, something happens even inadvertently, yeah, you replace it. You take care of it. Yeah. A sorry sometimes doesn't cut it. One has to go with not just the lip service, but with a physical action afterwards to restore. Right? Yes? Yeah. Replace, give back, or at least make an effort. Yeah. Yes? Well, there are payment installments and stuff available. Right? I'm sure it happens. It's good for, with God as well if you do that. And with the people you hurt and have to deal with. Okay, all right, just saying. Better make an effort than not. Right? Just think, oh, if I just say, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, so, yeah. What is your connection to God? <laughs> just depends. Then there are things like this. And like, oh, Lady Luck now, huh? Okay. That's not how God works. I don't believe that. <laughs> but okay. It's in here like this. Nice and short. Senses of the Levites. These by clans are the Levites that were registered. Oh, one more thing. And then, of course, again. Now, see, I was done talking. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> then again, too. One could, again, depending on uh, how, what you look as fairness and this and that, one could say, yeah, but, you know, if God were to hand out all the lots, then the Israelites would be grumbling again because, you know, maybe somebody got a better one than they did. Da, 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 da. Well, then how great is your faith and belief in God to, to know his children and to know uh, the strengths of each clan? There wouldn't be any problem with that. Every clan would get exactly what the best place is for them. Hmm? God said, I will lead you to the land of milk and honey. As I said, I'm not sure if that's where they are at. Then that means for everyone. I don't think God would slight anyone. Never has, never will. So again, what's your thinking when it comes to all that? Yeah, that then you need to yeah, be told, taught. Yes, but God doesn't look at it as, okay, you go here, you go there. He looks at the people. He looks at you and goes, this is where I need you. That's where you're going to be good at. This is where you will be happy at. This is where you will excel Right? Yes. Yet yeah, it takes a clan as well. 
right? Okay. All right. Can I go on now? Yeah. Okay, these uh, census of the Levites. These by clans are the Levites that were registered for Gershon, the Gershonite clan, for Kohath, the Kohathite clan, for Merari, the Merarite clan, still the same. These are the Levite clans, the Libnite clan, the Hebronite clan, the Malite clan, the Mushite clan, and the Korahite clan. Oh, there's one very similar to that other one. Kohath fathered Amran. Amran's wife was called Jochebed, daughter of Levi, born to him in Egypt. Wow. A wife is mentioned here in the census of the Levites. Interesting. I wonder why. Jochebed. 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 To Amran, she bore Aaron, Moses, and Miriam, their sister. Oh, I see. Oh, so Amram and Jochebed, daughter of Levi. Oh, that's why she's mentioned. Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Oh, huh? I guess when you bear some important children, eh, you get a mention in the Bible. <laughs> okay, cool. Someday I will be in there. <laughs> Extended Bible. <laughs> Somewhere. We all will, right? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, cool. I like it. Aaron fathered Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. Nadab and Abihu died when they brought unauthorized fire before Yahweh. You kind going of keep mentioning that, aren't you? Altogether, 23,000 males of one month and over were registered. Oh, this, was, this is a different census here. Uh, <clears throat> a month old and over were registered. <clears throat> Only 23,000? What happened to their 84,000? They were not registered with the Israelites since they were given no heritage with the Israelites. Dear me, how many of, how have they depleted? What happened? Such were the men registered by Moses and the priest Eleazar who took a census of the Israelites on the plains of Moab near the Jordan by Jericho. Not one of them was among those whom Moses and the priest Aaron had registered when they counted the Israelites in the desert of Sinai. What? That's just the Levites. What? What happened? What? 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 Let me read that again. Not one of them was among those. Wait, wait, wait. Such were the men registered by Moses and the priest Eleazar. Who took a census of the Israelites on the plains of Moab near the Jordan by Jericho. Not one of them was among those whom Moses and the priest Aaron had registered when they counted the Israelites in the desert of Sinai. Now here it says the Israelites. This is just the, still the census of the Levites though it says here. Did they switch something up again? For Yahweh had told them that these were to die in the desert, and that none of them would be left except Caleb, son of Jephne, and Joshua, son of Nun. Fast forward, somewhere. To, what did we miss here all? Maybe it's going to come up in other books, right? We don't know. Okay. Well, that's the end of 26, y'all. Interesting. This isn't just about there's definitely many different names of tribes that I've you know, noticed or clans rather some tribes some clans and the numbers have oh, well according to the there's 
600,000, still 600,000 some. Definitely, what, a couple thousand less, maybe? But not much more. That's kind of a surprise to me after the plagues and the, and the this and the that and the wars they've already been involved in. And, but some, there seems to be some things missing in there, right? Yes? Oh, interesting. I don't know. There it is. It's a hist the history of the people, right? Yes? Yeah. Ah. Interesting to read. Dan. Dan has gone down. What have they done? They've been so depleted. Maybe one of might be one of the warrior clan. I don't know. Ah. I don't remember if we read any of that. Anywho. So there it is, right? Ah, well, all the discrepancies. This, nah, and not sure, right? Yeah, well, who would read that anyway? For what purpose? Uh-huh. Well, again, we read the Bible, right? As a guide. We do. Yes? I could see that a, 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 a man would read this completely different right? and have many different other things to say about it and definitely would be uh, more in favor of what? Yes? Well, that's because a man has to protect his family. Right? Well, but then also, let me ask you then, uh, in 25, for example, where was the protection there? What did the men do, actually? Well, the women there, you know, from, as I said, don't put the blame where it doesn't belong. <laughs> it takes two to tango kind of thing, you know. It's true. So, so is is uh, when one looks at certain things, it's the 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 protection part that uh, should be absolute to protect his family, his wife, his children, his surroundings. This not yes, yeah. Shouldn't that be a hundred percent at all times, or only when it's convenient to say that? So that, what, excuses can be made for other bad behavior or ideas or certain ways one just wants to deal with situations? No, just asking. If everyone lives nicely and peaceful out there with each other, then how does the protection of your family look like? What do you need to protect within your family and in your surroundings? Huh? If all that other stuff falls away, of course, you won't let anybody interfere in your marriage, number one. Huh? Or misguide and try to steal your children. No, not, not kidnapping, I'm talking... Huh? In other ways. You, eh, with what is given to you, as a man, for example, eh, I'm talking to the guys now, <laughs> eh, you've been given that for a reason, so put your best talents into it. Of course, always on the path of Good and right. Huh? Yeah. Anyway. Just, huh? again, right? Yes. How do we as a collective look at now what protection means? Huh? Against what? Whom? Huh? What did I start out with? Ah, huh? Before I started even doing the reading. 
Listening to God. If we put our own selfish desires out of that way, out of the way, it's not that hard to listen to God. Again, because of what? I explained that. I have a physical body and I have a spiritual body. And I have a soul. A soul is attached to whom? Part of whom? Which makes me then... And who's a part of me? There. Yes? Okay. Anywho. There it is. Oh. Ooh. So, I did what I needed to do yesterday plus... I need to go and pick up some sticks. It's Saturday. I think I'll be okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> some people have Saturday as their Sabbath. Oh, I could make that. It's rain. It did rain yesterday, by the way. Now it's nice and sunny. And uh, it's fine. It still was perfect. Uh, I think it's going to rain again, which is even more perfect because I planted some seeds which uh, need some water uh, every day right now. Anyway, so. Uh, I can't pick up sticks today. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. No, uh, that's the Sabbath too. I got two days of Sabbath here to observe now. Saturday and Sunday. Ah, that's silly, right? I don't know. It's a good excuse not to pick up sticks. <laughs> all right, all right. No, 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 no. Now, I'll we'll see. I'll see what happens. It, the, the, everything's coming up now. It's going to go fast, and and uh, you know, everything will get taller and greener, and then it'll be harder. And by June, I don't have to worry until yeah, maybe mid-May, the snakes are starting to come out. The... Uh, Black snakes, you see, sooner than the uh, the poisonous ones are more. Uh, they have seem to have a bit of a different idea about what warmth is. But eighty six degrees, uh, sometimes they come out a little early. So you have to start being careful where you walk because you can't see as well anymore as you do in the winter time, which doesn't matter because they're not around. But by June, beginning of June. You have to really start watching out for them critters, right? Yes? Yeah, because they bite you to snap. No, just don't step on them. Don't put your hand where you shouldn't, right? I mean, they are just as scared of, of me as I'm leery of them getting bit. Huh? Yes? Okay. So, there is that give and take, right? Hey, look, I'm going to leave you alone, leave me alone, and... As the one tramping through the woods, not nicely slittering, right? Yes, carefully. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have to pay a bit more attention, don't I? Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. Found another example. All good things come in threes. Okay. God's love and blessings always. May He protect you, and I will talk to you another time.